Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 27th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Madrid, Spain. Well, today we got updates from Apple for pretty much all of its products. Uh, this, of course, comes at the back end of the big announcements yesterday. And in addition to new features, there are also a large number, about 50 or so different security vulnerabilities that are being addressed by these updates. This affects uh, two Windows applications as well. iCloud and iTunes for Windows have been updated. The main issue here is WebKit vulnerabilities that are being addressed by but for iCloud, it also fixes some issues that sort of sound like these DLL loading vulnerabilities that are being exploited if you are launching the application or installing the application from an untrusted directory. In addition to updates for these Windows applications, we have updates for Safari, also security updates for Mac OS Mojave and Hi Sierra, as well as for Sierra TBOS and Xcode and iOS. The Xcode issue is sort of addressing a kernel approach escalation vulnerability. One interesting vulnerability in iOS sort of caught my attention. And they're talking about the ability to execute arbitrary code if you are clicking on a link within an SMS message. Also interesting, this vulnerability is located in the GeoServices subsystem. Also in mail, this update fixes another problem with SMIME. Of course, last year there was a lot of news around how SMIME cannot necessarily be trusted. At this point, I haven't seen any reports of any problems with this particular update. If you don't hear anything by the time you are listening to this podcast, it's probably a good idea to update your devices. And Asus responded to yesterday's news from Kaspersky that its live update software was backdoored and used by an advanced persistent threat actor in order to modify selected target systems. The press release states that Asus has modified the software to hopefully prevent a repeat of such an attack, that they put in some internal checks to make sure the software didn't get modified and also did improve their server infrastructure that is used to distribute this particular software. Now, when you read the press release first, it looks like it's a little bit at odds with Kaspersky's release. Kaspersky stated that this particular software, the malicious software, was likely installed on about a million different ASUS customers' systems, but only 600 of those systems were actually targeted. Now, ASUS's press release sort of uh, ties off that 600 number and basically states that only a very small number of systems were affected which is sort of true in that if you are not one of those 600 systems, then the backdoor isn't really going to do any damage to your system. So Asus released an update, make sure you have the latest and greatest version of their live update software installed. And a week or two ago, I think it was that uh, we had a report that Firefox had issues with certain anti-malware systems that set up an HTTPS proxy on the local system. The problem here is that these HTTPS proxies, they use their own certificate authorities in order uh, to maintain HTTPS connections uh, to the browser and Firefox just didn't trust uh, those certificate authorities. So Firefox now came up with a solution for this particular problem. The way this anti-malware works is that when it installs itself, it will add its certificate authority to the Windows certificate authority store. But of course, Firefox uses its own set of certificate authorities. Firefox will now import the Windows certificate authorities into its own certificate authority set. And with that should also import any certificate authorities being added by anti-malware. And turns out the UC browser, which is a fairly popular Chinese web browser supported by Alibaba, suffers from a potential man in the middle attack. This browser is typically distributed via Google's Play Store. However, it has the ability to download additional components directly from 
Alibaba or the company that's creating this browser, UC Web. However, this update process isn't sufficiently secure and someone with a man in the middle position would be able to inject malicious code. This actually sort of violates Google's restrictions on the Google Play Store. Google usually requires that software update itself only through the Google Play Store, which then of course uses the secured update mechanism. Well, that is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.